Howdy folks, John here. In today's video we're going to be continuing on with the Roban EC130 build. In the last video we actually got the mechanics all put together and saw it flying for the first time on my Flintstone Flyer test bed. Everything went well. The motor was running a little warm. I have since had eight more flights on it and I've lowered the motor timing so it's running a little bit cooler. I'm happy with that. I've checked over everything else, belt tension, fasteners, no slop or play is developing in anything. Servos are running cool. Tail servo gets a little bit warm, nothing abnormal though, but I can certainly appreciate now why Roban recommends such a high torque tail servo with these Fenestron tail rotors. So in today's video, we're actually going to be getting the mechanics finally installed into the fuselage and test flying it in that. First we'll check for resonance or harmonic vibrations and assuming everything goes well there, we'll get it up into the air for, for proper test flights. And I'll also be going over a little screw up I had with the lighting system, you know, just so you don't make the same dumb mistake I did. Let's get started. Ooh, just remembered a quick test I wanted to do before I mounted the mechanics and that was to check the servo load. And I do this on every build just to make sure there's nothing uh, funny or screwy going on. So I just take my uh, digital multimeter, hook it up in series with my RX battery or BEC and uh, have it in the current scale of course. And then I will just stir all the servos. Servos will peak their most current right when they're changing direction, at least when they're unloaded, like they are now. So we got up to around three amps there a couple of times. And my general rule of thumb to play it safe is to multiply whatever the maximum number there is by four. So 12 amps would be the most that this system would probably peak draw for a brief moment under high disc loading or something like that. For general flight though, I bet you this system won't be drawing much more than six amps max. So I've got my RX battery mounted as far forward in the fuselage as possible. I want as much weight up front as I can so I don't have to add any unneeded nose ballast. Probably still gonna have to. But I just wanted to mount that first so I can see where my um, power leads are located and that way I could make up my RX switch, just a little toggle switch, and I've got a pigtail coming off of it for the power feed that goes to the RX plug, and then this is a switched output that will feed the um, lit instrumentation pod up in the canopy, and then this is also a switched output feeding, of course, the uh, RX system in the mechanics. So I've just got to figure out where I'm going to mount that. I think I'm going to drill a hole probably right here. Have it right on the bulkhead here. I want to thank a fellow Roban EC130 builder for reaching out to me to let me know about this. I probably would have figured it out eventually, but uh, probably saved me a lot of time here. In the second video I had mentioned, you know, that the battery packs fit back in these holes just going by my experience with the Roban AS350 which have got the sliding trays. Not so on the 130. There's actually enough room in the belly pan here to velcro them right onto the belly. And this is important for two reasons. One, don't have to worry about building a tray mechanism for back here. But more importantly, we're moving a lot more mass forward and on a tail heavy <laughs> Fenestron scale helicopter, getting as much mass forward to get the correct center of gravity is very important. And the reason we can do it on the 130 is the bottom here is actually stepped. I don't know if you can see that, but it's stepped up for battery clearance. How awesome is that? So, Thanks fellow builder for correcting my error and saving me, likely, a lot of time. While we're in here, I may as well talk about my little uh, light issue. I completely forgot that the included light system that came with this, the little control board, it's only rated as high as 6 volts. I, of course, am running this unregulated off of a 2S LiPo. So I was feeding it, you know, over 8 volts when that battery was fully charged. 
it worked for a while and then it just stopped working. I couldn't figure out what was going on and I felt a little bored and it was hot as a firecracker and I think I cooked the little chip on it. I removed it to see if I could get a number off of it but nothing's coming up. So I roasted the little board, no big deal. I had a GT Power lighting kit on hand and it's got the exact same functions as the one that was supplied with the Roban kit. So if you happen to blow out your control board for your lighting system, the GT Power one, same thing. This time though, I made sure to put in, hopefully we can see that, an actual voltage regulator here. So the uh, power is being regulated down. I've got this set at 5.6 volts. So the eight volts that's coming into it is being stepped down properly. And while we're on the lights, just wanted to show you one other thing. So I've got all the LEDs mounted in the tail section and there's provision for three, the two uh, side positioning lights and then the one top beacon light. But if you look at any night photos of EC-130s, there's also a white position light right on the top of the tail fin. So I just got a, a big white LED and fired it in there, soldered it up. Fishing those wires back through the tail unit wasn't exactly easy, just had to get some uh, mechanics wire and shape it kind of in this direction. Fish it through, fish the wires through. Took a little bit of time, but no big deal. And then on the inside here, I don't know if that's showing up, but I've got the wiring taped and glued down so it won't interfere with the mechanics of the tail boom. And then just have it coming out on some cable loom that houses the four wires for the four lights. And these will plug into the little control module. About the easiest part of one of these Roban scale builds is actually fitting the mechanics. It goes really slick. Just gonna move the servo arms back so they clear through the opening in the doghouse here. I also find it helps to tilt the swash plate. And these back brackets on the back, they just slide under little plates. And there we go. You just have to bolt these in, just make sure it's centered. And the only little fitment adjustment I had to do was use a Dremel a rotary tool with a sanding drum just to notch out these little clearance notches for the carbon boom braces. And last up, before you bolt everything down, you just want to check nothing's hitting the inside of the fuselage. So our receiver is close to the edge there, but it's not hitting. There are those rear angle brackets that fit under the plates that I was talking about. Before I install the blades, I just want to make sure the spacing hasn't changed when I mounted everything up here. So we just want to look at the air gap between the end of the blade and the duct housing as I spin it. So we've got nice clearance all the way around. No worries. With all the blades on, I'm just going to manually spool it up by spinning the main rotor head. Just to make sure we don't have any clearance issues. And nothing is hitting. Of course, this is no representation of when it's actually up to true running speed at 12 to 14,000 RPM. 
where the phrase shit hitting the fan could take on a whole new sense of reality. Okay, I think we got her all beat here as far as the electric goes. Got my RX wired up to my switch. Got my lighting installed. And then we've made up our series harness. So I'll just plug that in right now. See if the magic smoke comes flying out of the ESC. Fingers crossed, I've double checked polarity on the plugs and on the ESC, of course. You always want to do that. No smoke. All right. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Scared. Just feeling for vibration. No, no rubbing. Well, the Fenestron didn't disintegrate and blow the whole ass end of the helicopter off, so that's a good thing. Before mounting the blade, so we can get test flying it in full fuselage format, have to address center of gravity, and it's a question that comes up a lot. And the Roban here, like most scale helicopters, is tail heavy, so we have to compensate for that with uh, ballast. And a Fenestron even more so. There's a lot more tail mass here with the big fin and all the Fenestron mechanics and everything. So I've got the flight batteries in and the RX pack. There's no internal seats or the uh, instrumentation panel. But let's just see where we're sitting at right now just with battery placement alone. As you can see, very tail heavy still. Now I measured up all the seats and the instrumentation pod and they come to 500 grams and assuming I finally put a pilot in here, my little pilots weigh around 100 grams, about 600 grams of extra mass that will be going in the front here. So I've got a 600 gram 6S battery and I'm just going to tuck this up in the nose here and we'll see where we're at now. Almost perfect. Just a little tail heavy if anything, but I wouldn't be worried about that. Problem is that 600 grams is right at the front of the nose and the 600 gram weight that will be going in here eventually will be spread out, you know, basically starting from about here forward. So even with that uh, 600 grams, we're probably still going to need maybe 100, 150 grams right at the nose. And the further you can get the mass up in the nose section, the less you have to put in. The further you put it out, the less you're going to need to balance it. So it's getting late here. I'll mount up the blades 
and uh, we'll see you outside in the morning. The next morning. Good morning, everyone. Well, it's go time. Change your underwear at the ready. So again, I'm just watching for any weird vibrations, harmonics that are building maybe in the fuselage that are matching the rotor RPM. This is a thousand RPM head speed. Beautiful. Uh, the gains can certainly be turned up on <laughs> cyclic. It almost feels like flying it without the uh, stabilization system turned on. But it's not bad. But yeah, that'll be the first thing I do is turn up the gains. Six. Tail authority, even at this low head speed though, is fine. Like it's no 3D helicopter, but uh, that's not what it's supposed to be. These things are big, heavy, and bulky. They fly like a Zeppelin. That's what gives them the realism. You know, at just over nine kilograms, she's a heavy girl. Oh, I still love that view. The girth of this thing head on is unreal. Okay, I'm gonna try the next highest head speed, which is 1200. I'm just gonna land before switching it. Remember, we had that tail oscillation in Flintstone flyer format. Not getting it here at all. Certainly more lively. 1200 seems really nice. Or sorry, this is 1100, not 1200. My apologies. But yeah, I think 1100 RPM. That's where I'm gonna like flying this the most. And let's try 1,200 now. Don't really notice much difference between 1,200 and 1,100. I'm gonna go back to 1,100. Let's try a climb out here. Yeah, she's lifting a lot of weight. <laughs> Just amazing. Oh, that Fenestron looks so cool. What a gorgeous looking machine. Yeah, so other than turning the cyclic gain up a bit, it's pretty good. Going back to a 1,000 head speed. Yeah, really sluggish climb out rate at 1,000. That was full collective. 
But tail isn't blowing out. I've got a little bit of anticipation there. So as the collective is raised, the tail rotor automatically adds in more pitch. A little bit too tight in this yard to be flying this big behemoth. Wow, that's impressive. So I'm going to check the flight data now. See you down at the bench. Won't bore you with the minutia of a post-flight data analysis. Everything looks good here. Current, we maxed out at 52 amps. It's sipping around 30 amps during the test hover there. So no problems there. Ripple voltage stayed below two and a half volts. That's my threshold on a 12S pack. So no problem with ripple voltage. We don't have to install an auxiliary cap pack. Everything else looks good. The worrying number is the temperature. It got up to almost 103 Celsius. I never want to see an ESC get over 80, 90 maximum. Even that's pushing it. So I'm definitely going to have to install a uh, cooling fan across the ESC. Despite a few little teething issues, all went well. You know, uh, that's why you do these progressive tests on these things. So you can identify little issues like that before taking out to the flying field. Main thing is the Fenestron didn't explode even at the uh, highest head RPM. So really happy with that and good tail authority. Uh, all my fears of poor tail authority are out the window. These things work well, obviously when paired with a proper strong servo. So my biggest priority now before going to the flying field is getting a fan in there to pass air over the ESC. Motor was running a little warm, but not too bad. Uh, like most of the Northern Hemisphere, BC is suffering from a heat wave now too. And it was pretty warm out even this morning, but also just hovering it around. So no air was coming into the scoop to cool the motor. So I'm not overly concerned about that. Of course, we'll have to check it when we're out at the flying field. And got to turn up the cyclic gain a bit. It's kind of mushy. If you've ever flown a big helicopter with no stabilization or your fly barless system turned off, it's kind of what this felt like. There was, uh, you know, a lot of active piloting going on just to keep it in a fairly stable hover. So with this much mass, I guess the uh, gains have to be, go up a little bit on the cyclic. But other than that, really happy. Looked gorgeous in the air and can't wait to do some big sky flying with it out at the field. So that'll be the next video on this thing. Probably be a little while because I've obviously got to order a fan now. Next video that I do will be a review on this little heli. It just arrived in the mail today, so the timing's kind of good. This is the Goose Guy S2 Legend, uh, 200 size direct drive brushless motor. Been getting a lot of questions on it. So uh, until that time, thanks for watching. Happy flights.